Okay, right, what I'm going to talk about now is I'm going to talk about the uh, practical application of uh, topography in practice. We've, uh, we've got some images up on uh, screen here, and we're going to take some pictures of Billy. Billy, if you want to get yourself in the, in the hot seat there, we're going to show you just how easy and how, how simple, how quick topography can be and what, a, what an important tool this is uh, in, in routine practice. Uh, we'll just get everything set up there, and we're going to... Go on, new picture. Okay, hands away we go. We're going to work with Billy there. Now, we've done something very deliberate with Billy this morning. We've actually left Billy's soft contact lenses in situ. And what we're going to do here, as we're taking these pictures, we're going to have a look at these mires, and we're going to see that these mires are not absolutely perfect. And that will give you the... Um, uh, information you, you need if you're ever doing any dry eye management because this will show pre-lens tear film and it will show you very early tear film breakup times. Now, topography is just like landing an aeroplane, isn't it, Hans? Can you all see the runway there? We've got a, uh, we've got a green line and a uh, green cross line and a red target line. And as soon as the two are, are clumped together, you'll see the uh, topographer takes, starts taking images uh, very, very quickly indeed. Um, if you just rack back very slightly there, Hans, can you guys all, all see these mires? And can you see how quickly they're breaking up? Because that is the pre-lens tear film. Uh, and this very mu much mimics uh, conventional dry eye. So anybody doing dry eye management, this is a hugely, hugely useful uh, tool to, uh, to use. OK, Hans. Uh, if we look up in the top right-hand screen there, we, we've got... Uh, number 98, that's given us a very, very good reading. This is a percentage score. So 98 is exceptionally good. Can we get a 99, Hans? No, no, no. Not on a, not on a dry. Oh, we got a 99. Hey, rock and roll. 99 is about as good as it gets. I'm well assured that Lorraine here has got 100% every now and then. Isn't that right, Lorraine? How, how many times do you get 100%? Does it not let you get 100? I got 100 once. Yeah. Uh, right, what the computer's doing there, you can see if we go left to right, we've got 96, 97, 98, 99, and those are percentage scores, and that gives us a pretty good idea about which one we want to save. Which one do you want to save, Hans? Far right? Yeah, why is that? More, more data, more imagery. We can see that they're all fairly similar, and it's a slightly skewed image, because remember, Billy's actually got contact lenses uh, in at the moment. OK, can you save that one for us? Thank you, Billy. OK, we'll have a little look at that. Brilliant. OK. What we've got there is a, a topographical image of, of <laughs> the front of Billy's contact lens. OK. What we've got down at the bottom there is we've got, a, we've got a section through the middle of the contact lens. And you can see as we spin this line, can you see the, uh, the geography at the bottom there will, will change uh, as well. So we can take a section through any uh, dimension we like through 360 degrees. And you can see that the contour will uh, change accordingly. OK, Hans, can we have a look at what we want to do? Can we do uh, HVID? Can we do a ruler measurement? Can we me measure uh, horizontal visible iris diameter on there, please? Uh, we take our ruler, take a single point measurement, drag it across the corner, and we've got... I can't see that from you. What have we got? 10.77. And what that goes to prove is that every single corner here is 11 millimeters across or, or there or thereabouts. But again, essential when you're doing uh, ortho K, these sort of quarter and a half millimeter measurements are absolutely, uh, absolutely crucial. OK, Hans, can we do different types of uh, imagery? There we go. We've got four different images there. We've got the original uh, Myers that we can have a look at if we want to. Uh, we've got a, an axial image, which will give us a, uh, a very broad um, generalistic viewpoint of the cornea, and we've got uh, a tangential image. Can we just pop that one up on the full screen there for just a second, Hans? Tangential image. Um, I tend to work with tangential all the time. I get used to the imagery. Um, I like the detail that it, uh, that it gives me. But the one thing I actually like in practice is very much the visual aspect. So can we, have a, uh, can we click on the, the three-dimensional one, Hans? And this is, the one the, this is the one the patients particularly like. And can we spin it? We rather like spinning them around, don't we? And patients like that as well, don't we? Okay. 
Right, what we're going to do now is we're going to have a look at a tiny little bit of uh, diff mapping. Now, diff mapping is particularly important when we're measuring or monitoring keratoconics and absolutely crucial with uh, Ortho-K. Those of you that saw the, the diff map on the Ortho-K talk a couple of minutes ago will see this. Now, this is uh, Danny Pepper's eye, and we can see here the, uh, the lower image is a very, very normal eye image, and the one on top, uh, there's a little bit of corneal distortion there. Now, that sort of distortion would not show on a conventional keratometer. You would not see that. You might see a slight skew of your mind, but you wouldn't see an awful lot. But it shows up like a beacon uh, on the topographer. Uh, and what we get out there on the right-hand side, of course, is, again, diff map. It's not, uh, it's not dramatic, but it's certainly, uh, certainly there okay. Okay, can we do a composite? Can we do a composite map, please, Hans? What we're going to do now is we're going to take a uh, composite map. Can we have a volunteer? Thank you, Danny. Danny's going to volunteer for, to uh, have a composite map done. Now, what a composite map is going to do is going to broaden out the diameter of which we can take topographical imagery. OK, we're going to take a series of images now. Uh, what we're going to do is we're going to take a central image first, which is the conventional map that you'd normally take from a topographer. Then we're going to take a series of images which are uh, high uh, north, south, east, west. And the computer is going to put all that imagery together. There we go. We've got a 95 there, Hans. We'll settle for 95 for the sake of, oh, 97, even better. Rock and roll. We'll save that image. We're clear. Now, what's going to happen now is that uh, Danny's going to look. Which way are we going first, Hans? Up or down? He's going to look up. OK. So what you can see on this one is that Hans is still going to get the target right in the middle of the screen. But, but Danny's actually looking now up four rings from center. So effectively, the instrument is taking a picture, which is uh, low down. Can you see how the pupil is now off, off center? We'll save that one. OK, now we're looking to which way we're going, left or right? We're going to the right, yeah? <laughs> we're going around the clock. We're starting at 12 o'clock. We're going to 3 o'clock, then we'll go 6 o'clock and 9 o'clock. OK, again, can you see that pupil's off center? We've got a 97 there, Hans. Excellent. This is the tricky one next, isn't it, Hans? The next one's tricky because what Danny's going to be doing is going to be looking down here. So as he looks down, uh, top lid can get in the way here a little bit. It's difficult to get an image sometimes, but Danny's uh, practiced at this one. He's going to help us out a little bit on this. There we go. Almost there. <laughs> Hands you brilliant, 92. Will it do? 92 will do, okay. 92 will do for a downward gaze. What we got, one more? Ooh, look at that, that's a nice one. There we go. 99. Hey. <laughs> OK. What Hans is going to do now by this uh, electronic wizardry, I call this, is going to put all these uh, images together. And the, and the computer uh, is actually going to add the things up together to make one uh, single image. And this gives us a very, very broad image over a very, very broad area. And you're going to ask me, what is the benefit of this sort of thing? Well, the benefit we're going to see in, uh, in just a second. One failure. Second. Three o'clock again.
Okay. Going with the previous image. Okay, can you pull them all together? And you can see what we've got there. We've got a composite map, and you can see it's over a, over a huge area, and you can see Hans is running through the uh, section now. And can you see how the, the cornea becomes progressively flatter uh, towards the limbus, but when it reaches the limbus, it, it, it sort of uh, forms a, uh, a rather a uniform curve as it just goes onto the sclera uh, itself. Okay, so it gives a much, much broader image, and this is particularly useful when we're doing things like large diameter semi-scleral lenses. So can we pop up a virtual uh, ICD fit on there, please? And ICD is a, a regular corneal design lens. It's 16.5 millimeters in diameter. Uh, and what Hans is going to do is he's going to put up a virtual uh, fluorescein pattern there. Okay, and you can see also down at the bottom there, uh, we've got a section of the fluorescein pattern itself. Can we steep that up a little bit, Hans? And you can see the ch figures change uh, completely. Unlike conventional RGPs, uh, semi-sclerals are not really affected by uh, lid tension on blinks. So these fluorescein patterns that we get on the virtual images tend to be very, very accurate. Uh, when we fit in the lenses uh, themselves. And we can juggle about with the center, we can juggle about with the edges, we can juggle about with the edge lift as well. And you can do pretty much, pretty much whatever you like on that one. Okay. Thank you very much indeed, everybody. That just about concludes things for the topography. Thank you very much indeed for listening. And please come back again later on this afternoon where Katie Harrow will be talking about myopia control. Thank you very much indeed, Danny. Thank you very much indeed, everybody, for listening. <laughs>